All right, guys. Uh, welcome. This is uh, another comic comic creator chats. This week I got Inaki Miranda. That's our butcher. How does he, how do you say name? You said it perfectly. Yes. Okay. Inaki Miranda here from uh, from all the way from Spain. He's here to talk to us about We Live. Um, if you haven't been reading this book, it just ended its first arc, and oh my gosh, it was an amazing story. That if we'll get we'll get to issue five because it it caught me by surprise. Uh, which is awesome. I love it when books catch me by surprise. And it makes sense. Um, so very excited. Um, but uh, I guess Anaki, uh, you've been. This is not your first book. You've been drawing for a long time. You've been doing lots of different books. What? Where? How did you sort of get started? I started. Uh, I work. I started working for 2000 AD. Um, you know the typical story. I went to a Bristol convention and showed them my portfolio. And they liked it, and I started working. But this is really after ten years of trying to get in the business. It's not just like I went in and send in uh, copies to you know DC Marvel, but I wasn't ready at all. Yeah. <laughs> and just when I I decided to go to a convention, and that's where I met you know the, uh, Matt Smith from 2000 AD, and he liked it and started giving giving me work. And then the next year, I went again to the to Bristol, mm -hmm. and there I met Shelley Bond from Vertigo. Okay. And the same thing, she she liked my work, and she, she said I want to keep you busy. And this was started slowly with some like a guest artist short story for Fables, and then an issue for Fables, and then I did Fairest, and then I co-created Coffin Hill with Katie uh, Kittridge. Yeah. And then I jumped to the superhero universe of DC. Yeah. Catwoman, Wonder Woman, Harley Quinn, Batman, Beyond, et cetera. So, and yeah, I, for, when I was pulling up your stuff, I was like, man, you just knocked out everyone in DC. And then you did some great, I mean, Coffin Hill and just those great DC, uh, Vertigo books. I mean, you did Fables and Ferris. And I'm like, dang, you mm. got this resume that's impressive. I like it. Yeah, I was lucky. The truth is that I always wanted to write. Mm. But I just I started self-publishing something in here in, in Spain, and then I started with a book and the, with a publisher that was called AP Comics in in the UK. Mm -hmm. But um, you know. Uh, I just didn't find the, the right moment to really get into writing. I, like I, I, I made a stop and decided to go into drawing only because I had to make a living. Yeah. <laughs> and, <What>? I, no. <laughs> and because of my English, you know, it's quite broken. Mm -hmm. It's something that I had to wait for the right moment to say, okay, now let's try to write for the U, uh, U.S. market, which yeah. is not easy for. So. so is We Live your first one, first U.S. written book? Yes. Hmm. Wow. So you just came out swinging. You're like, hey, I'm just going to completely flip everyone's heads and just, man, because, like, I don't even know. If, do you realize that there's, like, Facebook Facebook groups dedicated to We Live? Like, no. I'm, really? I'm a part of – they. Uh, I'm a part of a, a group called ECGCE, and I don't, I don't ask me what the letters stand for, but <laughs> they, they have a Facebook – a community and one of the books that people like and we live and there's just been and when issue five came out the like the chatter and i didn't get it right away so i didn't read it right when it came out everyone's like oh my god and then it's like and a new what and i'm like what did i miss don't okay no spoilers because i really like the story um, oh that's good. they kept their spoilers away from you they, they kept i was i was like i re reread it again today i was like no one <laughs> told me and i don't i just was like okay it's been out two weeks can we, or three weeks we can talk about it now but uh like no one, no one said that. You know what? These guys are going to be transformed into paladins. I'm like, that didn't see that coming. I mean, uh, yeah, that was that was really fun. For now, I wrote this with Roy, my brother, mm -hmm. and it was really fun for us and exciting to keep. You know, we knew what we were doing and what was going to happen at the end of issue five, obviously. So it's really fun to keep it for ourselves and. And waiting what's going to happen when you know when the, the issue five uh, finally comes out um so i mean 
there was all this, like, I don't know, you had the interesting Facebook presence of advertising we live. And I don't have those images, but I saw you'd post and it'd be like a happy. Now, this is not this is a variant cover, but it was something equivalent of this, of a girl and a guy just sort of standing there holding hands. And then it was like the scene would be changed. And then it was a different scene. And it was like beach scene, a city scene. And it's like coming. We live. And it's like, what the heck? Is this a zombie book? Is this a... Uh, like, th was that your thinking or idea of like, how did you sort of go about like, we're slowly going to reveal and then it's going to change when you actually read the book. That's not the art at all. Um, yeah. Well, I think it was all about doing, you know, something, uh, totally free mm -hmm. with no attachment to any genre yeah. or anything. It was just what Roy and I wanted to do and we did it. Um, and also because I've been, I think I've been an artist for so long. And at the same time, I've been like a frustrated uh, writer. Yes, I wanted to write. And this time I finally got to, you know, match uh, or do this, change a little bit the order. What I mean to say is that um, instead of, you know, having a script and then and putting the art on it yeah when you have um a visual rhythm before even starting to write of things you want to to draw mm. um it changes the dynamic of of the writing because you're adapting the writing to specific scenes or places that you want to uh, put in the book because they break the rhythm of the story yeah so it was, and also because I was, you know, working with Roy, my brother, uh, we have total trust of, you know, saying whatever we want and yeah. doing whatever we want. And and if I had a visual idea, I could talk it with him. And I want to, like, I don't know, uh, in the issue, in the first issue, there's the gas station scene. Mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to, to put a gas station scene because yeah. you know the road story and it had to be there or in the um, in the floodlands scene in issue yeah. two that was very much inspired by miyazaki's uh spirit away you know the train scene with, with the oh with, yeah that's such a beautiful yeah movie. so it was i think one of the things that that worked was the the total freedom freedom of integrating the art even sometimes before the the the, the writing and like when i look through and I, sadly I, I don't have images from inside your books well i'll take that back i have one uh mm -hmm. but most of them are just the covers and everything but like you have like i love that i mean here's some of the sort of the sketches as you thought of the characters like yeah this this has this unique feel to it um of I guess it's called chibi chibi uh it's a style like a japanese style of yeah star, but but not quite like it's it, it like when i looked at the original cover and i was like okay is this anime is it not is it what is what is going on it but the, then you read it and you're like it's everything it you you got to pull in all different cultural influence like if i'm a fan of anime i'm gonna like this story if i'm a fan of sci-fi and adventure i'm gonna like this story if i like horror i'm gonna like this story and you do that so brilliantly because if I like horror, then I go to this. What the hell? Like, I mean, it's you, you, you switch back and forth so smoothly where it all made sense. Yeah, I, I think it's because it made sense in visually in my head. And and what I was saying before is just having fun. Mm -hmm. When you it's like you do whatever you, you feel uh, like doing because you trust in that your intuition will integrate things um, because it's coming from you. Yeah. So when it's everything in the visuals, I mean, it's coming from one person and it's like, I've been honing my style for 15 years. So this time is like, I think it's the first time I was more confident with what I was going to do and be freely with my style and do just, just what with no expectation to the readers you know yeah well i mean yeah. you definitely every you made a story that everyone would liked and every issue still gave us a surprise 
I mean, in a good way, like not a, oh my God way. I mean, like different characters that you thought were important weren't as important because they didn't survive the issue or <laughs> like different things. And you're like, oh, okay. The wise old sage. Well, he's not in the, he doesn't in the, <laughs> it's like, oh, everything. And then your covers tease things like issue five. This has hmm. a completely different meaning after reading the issue than it did when I'm watching it. Like look, just looking at it by it. It's a gorgeous cover or this big scary monster. Who's a good guy. I mean, it's just like, whoa! Yes. You, I, I, lo I loved all that. Like, it's just even the covers themselves are fun and energetic. And I'm a big color guy and I love the Ooh. brightness and the, the, the visceral nature of your colors. I'm like, oh, this is, I don't know. I, 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 as you can tell, I'm a, I'm a fan and I'm a, sometimes I'm a little bit lost for words because of just what you've accomplished with yeah, your five issue story. Well, thank you. And, um, um, one thing that uh, I think is in, for the car, and, and you mentioned the covers, that's part of, I mean, storytelling for me has to be about um, exciting the reader every time, mm -hmm. not allowing him to be able to guess what's going to happen. And, and at the same time, keeping him curious or I think he knows what's going to happen and then he, he doesn't. That's very important for me to. It's like storytelling is like, you know, if you have a string mm -hmm. and the trick is you have to keep it tight, not too tight so it doesn't break, but not too loose so you can you can see the, you know, the, yeah, the, the string, the, the magic trick. So that's the same about storytelling. And it's always trying to trick the reader, but at the same time, letting him see that you're not really tricking him you're not playing with him it's just uh, you're being sincere without him knowing okay. no those covers are that so you did something in your books that i'm waiting to see people copy breaking in those little qr codes with the the soundtrack i was the if, if i have any complaint about it there weren't enough and like I love clicking on the thing and then then reading the next three pages. I mean, it would it just immersed and from every every chat group I was in that, that they loved and they're like, dude, sometimes I just play the music and I'm not reading it anymore. I just like the song. I just like the it just because you, you create this atmosphere. And how did that come about? How did that idea come about? That happened because my brother is in the he's a hip hop artist. And he's like he has context in the music industry here in Spain. Mm -hmm. So we first started when I did the cover, the you know, the trifold cover. And I was speaking with Roy, and we said, "How about we do a, a just a, a forty second soundtrack f just for the cover? We do a parallax animation mm -hmm. just to promote the comic, and at the same time, like uh, set a tone for the series with that forty second song, yeah. just." You know, like the mangas, they do like two or three pages at the beginning with colors, mm -hmm. and it's all black and white. And but it's it helps you to set the tone of of the rest because you can imagine what colors uh, scheme are, are going to in, in each page. So we thought, okay, let's do the music and set the tone for the whole for the whole series. And so he called a friend of his, is a guitarist of his group, and. We, we explained him what we wanted, what kind of atmosphere, emotion, etc. And he, you know, did this guitar track and sent it to us. And we loved it. And he said, it's perfect. Yeah. And and then, so, and I kept to myself, I was thinking, wow, wouldn't it be great to do a whole soundtrack, you know? Yeah. And for the whole comic. But I didn't tell my brother because I didn't want to bust his balls anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, their his friends and and i think it was the day after or the same day at night and roy called me and and told me i have an idea let's do a soundtrack for the whole series it was like perfect i mean that shows how, how much connected we are yeah and so he called another friend of his i mean the guitarist is mario gonzo lorente mm. and he called another artist uh, here in spain called el hombre viento who is the singer of the songs and we put them together. We told them the, the idea. They loved it. 
they're both comics fans too. Mm -hmm. So, and that's how it started. Then we would sit down with them and explain the atmosphere of, of the, that goes in this page in particular, how, what, what kind of emotion and, and it went on from there. And it was, we were lucky to have them and yeah. I was lucky to have my brother and it would, it's those things that come together and everybody's doing their best and it works. I mean, because I've seen like motion comics and I've seen like videos made out of comic books and everything. Yours, the way you guys went about it, I mean, I can see it going that route, but it was all, it's also just the fact that I'm reading it and I can listen to the soundtrack I'm supposed to read with it. Hmm. It, it just brings it brings an atmosphere. And, and sometimes, and yes, I mean, and I love how it just connects to a random YouTube video that unless I know that what it is, I don't necessarily search for it naturally on YouTube. But the hmm. QR code takes me there, and I can go. Uh, I remember back. I'm not sure if you were a part of, in the comics when there, uh, the big thing was the AR, where you certain book if you you scan your phone over it, and all of a sudden, oh um, yeah, yeah, video would play, and it'd be the the artist talking about. It. I'm not sure if DC did. I know Marvel did. All. I, I never saw that. I never, but I know what you mean by I never experienced it. Yeah. No, it but was, we we really want we didn't want to do like a sometimes something like a director Scott or something that was added to the comic. Mm. What we really wanted to do, I mean, at that time we were playing, you know, uh, The Last of Us and Death Stranding. Yeah. And the movies that we were, we had watched also, we wanted to enhance the experience, not give you an extra yeah. uh, of the comic. We wanted to, I mean, to me and to Roy to, uh, if we didn't, a comic. If we don't, if we can't put music to it or a soundtrack, it yeah. feels like we're we can't. We're not reaching the level we really want to to reach. So it's 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 our way to doing a film in some sort. <laughs> well, it, it it worked, and I liked. It wasn't like you. Hey, start here, page one, and play the play the song. It was you randomly flip to a page, and all of a sudden there's a QR code in, in a panel, and it's like. Why is the QR code here? I, I know issue five had two because you had your closing one. Did any other issue have more than one QR code? Yeah, the first one. The first one first had one. A, yeah an opening one and, and, a, and an ending. And I think the opening did the open one come right around this page? Yes, Maybe the exactly. page? yes. Yeah, and I, page. I love this page because this guy and it's like what the way you told the story and this you told the story with the art like you were talking about. Everything worked, but even your speech bubbles guide mm. you through the story. You you made a choice when you put them in there. I know. I mean, just because you're an artist and everything makes sense. But then you added music, and it was such a surprise to start a book and go. Wait, there's a soundtrack to this guy, and I wish I sadly the first time I read it, I read without realizing I was supposed to scan the QR code. Yeah. So it, it, I was like, ah, oh, I missed that first experience of scanning the QR code and then reading through those first three or four pages. Yeah, the, the lettering placement was more uh, the the letterer. Okay. But the idea, <clears throat> I mean, you can do go, go both ways. You can um, just listen to the music while you're reading the whole mm -hmm. until the whole book and the pages. Or our recommendation is that you expand the time of that particular scene. Um, so in that opening page. Mm -hmm. uh, Best way, in my in my opinion, to to experience it is to wait for the song to finish until you turn the page. Okay. So it's like you're there with him, and then you start the uh, the rest of the story. Um, almost in every in every soundtrack we do that, except for a for the train scene that it, it can last like two pages, and then mm -hmm. the and. The opening song in issue five also extends until the end of the countdown. It's it's pretty much intuitive. Uh, every uh, as yeah. as the reader wants to do it, right? I, I did enjoy the the one the issue five because it was more than just like it was like it's counting down and the page has a countdown on it too. Oh, I know exactly how long I'm supposed to spend. Uh, to <laughs> that, so I, I like that it was and it, I mean. The videos don't distract, but there is something in the video too. It's not just music. It's it there. I, I like how it all you guys put thought into it. I appreciate. No, thank that. you. Yeah, it's, it's like it gives a little life to the scene that you see still in the in the comic. Um, 
just just a little and just a little bit okay so five issue arc after shark like what is i mean obviously i'm calling different people are so excited about this book and you did you already have a the the second arc planned or was that like yeah. if people like it we'll do more no when we pitched this to aftershock mm -hmm. we pitched him the five issues as as the whole pitch and it ended yeah. saying this is what you what you just read is the prologue to we live yeah. because at the start we called it the first five issues the prologue was called we die but then it was changed and okay we pitched uh, this is we die and at the end he changed the title to we live and now and uh, this is the series you know okay yeah. so so this was wow so which i mean makes sense because you created now you're like okay well i did vertigo so we live the first five is vertigo now we're going into my my dc superheroes and dropping five paddle and oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i didn't think of that yeah but yeah uh, <laughs> but it's sorry go ahead. yeah no, I was going. It's not going to change really into you know a uh, superhero mm. genre, and all of a sudden it's going. It's just that now you have the Palladians as yeah. a new element in that world, but it's still going to be a survival story of hope and love, and yeah. uh, that's not going to change. The heart of the Willie is going to stay, you know, where where you in where it is in the five first issues, and. That's I think that's the piece that I liked the best because it wasn't it was a survival story, but it, the characters as you fell in love and f loved these three or four characters that were your sort of your main ones that followed throughout even though some of them might not have made it all the way to the very end or maybe they did or uh, like of course the brother sister combination like just that was as I started to identify as it uh, shoot how do you say hoto ho Hoto, yes, Hototo, Hototo. Hototo. like yes. as you start to go, I man, he's annoying. Man, he's cute. Man, I like him. Oh man, mm. what I don't want. No, sister needs to make it too. I mean, like you, you go through all those emotions, and then you add soundtrack in. I'm <laughs> excited to see where the story goes because, like, you didn't, you don't reveal anything other than now they're paladins, and it's like, okay, what the hell's going to happen next? I want to know. So yeah, and that's that's you know the the trick. What what I mean is, um. Instead of and and what it's like, everybody in has this uh, place of our, our childhood mm -hmm. that we carried it inside silently, and it's we it's it's a place we never leave, even if if we grow up, it's still there in our mind, and it's a place where you kind of always want to you know go back to that because of the freedom you have in, in the world is different in, uh, to your eyes so the idea of doing this kind of and uh, now you know the siblings uh, childhood but yeah. you not only know you experience it with them so it's kind of you know who they are it's not uh, we didn't do you can do it the other way you can uh, present a backstory of the characters and yeah. tell you, the reader how they were at the, you know when they were young and when they were child um but it, it wouldn't be the same thing as you experiencing all the way the with them along with them the story yeah so now it's they become like that thing of childhood that i was saying now when you read a story of hototo and and tala you know who they are and you feel who they are because you have without knowing you 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 went along with them in the first five issues well and you get to you build the story of tala protecting hoto and then at the very end you allude to the fact now it's his turn and like yeah. and just that and that's all you, you don't say anything you just give a couple of flashback images and it's like all right and you're like okay here we go <laughs> And then it's like crap. When does it's like when does six come out, or is it like like I gotta know, I gotta know. No. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it's come. It, uh, the idea is that in, it starts in summer this summer. Okay. So you take a few months break and then yes. come out with your next five issue or however long issue arc. Yeah, it's going to be five issues again. Okay. Uh, like eight, each season is going to be five issues. I mean, we already have planned at, at least until the end of issue of uh, season three. 
mm-hmm. you know what's going to happen and we have ideas of of, the, of more it will depend on on, on the sales i guess but, that's well uh, i would hope and we from we and aftershock and all the scouts and all the smaller publishers word of mouth sometimes takes longer to hit yes. than it does a dc or a marvel book or anything like that but, but what does dc and marvel in it's issue one and then no one cares or it's it's whatever the first appearance is and then it's only the fans of harley quinn or it's only the fans of catwoman or it's because so and so did the cover but books like what you just created when the trade paperback hits and people have a chance to read it they're going to go oh i want to continue on the story the story like the indie world because of the pandemic because we all have had more time to sit around and read our comics that we buy yeah has caused call, I have become a more avid reader and supporter of the indie comic book world because of the story quality of what you just wrote what I've and there's and you're not the only one but you I loved we lived from the second it came out it was interesting but finishing the entire five issues made it amazing I mean that the story was okay and then you came to issue five it's like oh but there's been two or three books like that but your book I, I would recommend anyone that's, that watches this, anyone that reads, read the entire five issues and understand what, how awesome of those two. But it's not even those two. I, shoot, I forget his name. This guy, uh, right here. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, Alice. like I loved him, and I, I'm I'm so, I was so excited with the last panel of issue five, uh, <laughs> or maybe second to last panel. But like, I'm excited that I'm like. Your, my favorite characters ended up being on the covers. Like, yes, yeah, the these two are the main characters, but it's their side people that are yeah. the awesome. Let's see, here's right here, the old guy. He's awesome. I would like it. Yeah, it was hard to kill him. Uh, I mean, but it was it's part of the uh, of the story of of uh, you know dangers of the world that we want, wanted to establish for for the siblings and yeah, and you made a dangerous world. While having colors that say "come play," like I mean, yeah. purples yeah. and pinks and greens, and they're all happy, and and, and some of it's like, okay, this is a happy-go-lucky world, but then freaking terrible things happen. Yeah, and I think um, it's it's different things at the same time that work in you know and in your head. On one side, I always it felt like I wanted to do. I remember. Growing up with you know Asterix, the the, the comic, the Belgium comic, mm. and at the same time reading uh, like stories of war and cowboys and barbarians with a very more mature or classic kind of drawing, you know. And I think that made me want to do something eclectic, uh, like doing. A cartoony style, but uh, a really more serious, uh, mature story. Not mm. combined those two. And with We Live, it was that. And at the same time, with you know the colors, there's the story being told with the color. So, I mean, mm. I spoke uh, with very closely with Eva de la Cruz because I know her then since forever. I yeah. think 25 years ago, we started working together in comics. So, you know, we can really speak about uh, what we uh, want creatively. And the colors really reflect the story for Hototo, like yeah. how you start with hope and innocence and happiness and how those colors start to fade away as the story you know, um, uh, continues, it's been told. So that was also part of the storytelling. The colors that had a very important p- part of it. I, well, I, yeah, because you get to the end, and it's a lot more sort of yeah. not as bright. But then you get to the ah, shoot that one scene. I'm like, man, you made the worst people, the worst scariest thing, be the the people. Uh, the, the I mean, I'm just like they're taking these little kids back in the back room, and what? <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Yeah, that, unfortunately, in, we're speaking about serious matters there because, unfortunately, that's part of the uh, the human race. It's, it's yeah. that cruel. You know, when we, when Roy and I first started in brainstorming about this, this story, mm. uh, 
the main thing we we were spoke, uh, speaking about was the refugee conflict, yeah. and was uh, what I we we thought what if the whole human race became a refugee because they had to flee, you know, to another planet, and from there on, it's just thinking of what situations uh, uh, a refugee family has to endure in their you know their journey because they yeah they have it to make a journey and oh almost always it's life and death situations so that's the back uh, thinking of we live really okay wow i, I just i guess I, I saw the refugee part but i didn't it didn't click but thinking through even though it's colorful and scary but seeing through and then thinking through okay they do run into people like this in a refugee's journey. Um, you do run into, or the cult, you know, the, the sect. Yeah. You have you, you do, run, and even when you you reach the end, when you let's say the frontier of, of giving country, yeah, they this uh, almost always don't give them asylum. Mm -hmm. So it, it's like a hopeless situation. There, where do I go if I I have to? run from where I'm at because I, I'll they'll kill me and at the same time the journey can kill me and at the same time when I reach the destination nobody is there to help me yeah so if you if you see you know the 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 journey of Talano Toto it, you can do a, a a simulation of a you know a refugee uh, journey because wow. so, that, sorry you're just I like I'm, I'm gonna have to read all five issues again to with to have that perspective, which I was gonna read it again anyway. So that doesn't hurt me. Uh, <laughs> it's I like hearing how it correlates and just that idea of being. Yes, it's fanciful. Yes, it's but every one of these things happening could there is a correlation to someone's experience, and so. Is that a passion of yours, the refugee the population? I know in Europe, especially depending on where you live, you've had a lot of refugees seeking asylum coming into your countries. Yeah, this. I mean, it's not. It's not like a, a passion. It's just that you see the world around you, and it's it's sad. I mean, there's people trying to you know reach uh, Spain, trying to cross the the ocean, and you know mm -hmm. they can't make it, or also. At uh, that time, it was the Syria conflict, yeah, uh, you know, the war. So it's just it's there. I mean, one thing that I think is that storytelling or any art creation is about um, fabricating a, a device, and that device uh, gives you an emotion. So mm -hmm. uh, when you tell a story, it's about uh, putting all the mechanism and cogs together, working, so at the end uh, uh, you have an emotion that you were looking for. And if if you don't reach that emotion, the device didn't work. So to reach that level of empathy in your story, um, you have I think even if the reader doesn't know it because it's been uh, you know hidden because and we leave all the situations are you know, uh, it's a, f a fantasy and it's not, uh, you know, like this Dr. Seuss or, or whatever. It, it doesn't, you can't exactly correlate them with something in reality. But if I do, if, uh, if when Roy and I are writing it, are thinking of that, we're putting uh, a realism that you're not aware of in yeah. our story. And I think that, that at the end, it, it gives you a result. Yeah. Well, uh, and that makes it makes those characters that you created, like you said, it gives them, it gives them their soul. It gives them, mm. I now have a face or I now have these, okay, this journey, how it affects the kids and how it affects the adults that are helping them and then how it affects the adults that aren't helping, that are there to torture and to scare and to, and you threw all those pieces in there and it's like, okay, it makes more sense because it is hard to just create a character out of nothing and yeah. then give it a fan of fancy world that doesn't exist you have to have some sort of point to go you know what this is our our journey is what would i we're seeing coming from people from syria or coming from people crossing the sudan to kenya 
Like we've seen these stories for years, Rwanda, all of them. These are, now I'm going to take these stories and make them fanciful, make them to where you don't have to connect. You can just, I can shut my brain off and read your comic and not once think about Syria. Exactly. Yes. That's, but that's now it. I can read it a second time with Syria in mind going, you know what? Some of those scenes remind me of when the chemicals were dropped. Yes. Uh, so mm -hmm. and it, it adds an emotion because now you're you it's it's easier for you to uh, empathize with the character because mm -hmm. and correlate it and, and compare it with something you saw in the news and that's really happening and even though if you're seeing a cartoony face you know and, and world yeah there there's a backstage to that fair I'm, 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 you, you blew my mind when you made the right, and I'm like, crap, I didn't read into this as much as I should have. But uh, well, you didn't have to. That's a, yeah. that's the. I'm just uh, um, because it's really about enter. It has to work on an entertaining level. Yeah, and we're not doing a, a thesis. You know, it, it's this is we're telling a story to create an emotion. That's all. Mm. I it matters to me that you reach the emotion. Uh, every time I want to hit it, that's oh, I'm so I'm so excited. Like I'm I'm going to go back and read it probably this afternoon, uh, or I guess nighttime for you. Uh, <laughs> but just to switch gears a little bit, of the, you had a lot of I don't even know. Do you really, how many comic covers that were came out for We Live? Like there was of course the main covers, but do you know how many? Like I'm gonna throw some up, and do you know, know like what stores or anything about them? Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I think I see. I've seen them all. I don't know. Yeah, I seen this. Yes. Okay, and then you have this one. Mm. Yeah, they're all amazing, and it's just that. I love yeah. the. I love these sketch ones that you that I saw yeah. you post these, and they're <laughs> gorgeous. There's another one. I don't know if I have it. Um, it's yeah, actually the background of our image that we're actually talking through. Oh, yeah. Yet. Yeah, I see it. Yes. Uh, then you have this one. Um, yeah, it's I, amazing. To see, you know, when you create a character. To see it being brought to life by another artist, this one was, was amazing. Dustin yeah. Nguyen. Yeah, he. Uh, that's what I, as a comic book fan, that's part of the reason that like this comic. I mean, this was the one for ten, I think the and the rest of them were like different stores. So, I mean, just also knowing that stores believed in what you created to hey, I'm gonna make 250 copies of this to have an exclusive or 100 whatever the number was. Yeah, I mean, to me, it was kind of it's the first time I experienced this. To be honest, even if I've been working for fifteen years or I don't know how many, mm. this is the first time I I experienced this interest and and love and support from you know from stores and readers and this is all new to me, really. Yeah, and it's all new to Roy, of course, because you know uh, it's the first his his first comics comic so yeah it's 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 kind of surreal to me to be seeing this reaction not surreal mm. but it's, it's really exciting um, yeah. because it's something that you just it was in our heads only and we didn't know what's, what was going to happen really to if it was going i mean i wouldn't even know if we, we were going to reach season two yeah well i'm, I'm excited that you are i um... It's and we live went to what the first issue went to three prints or two, three prints, yeah, three, three. yeah, and which I have the the sadly, well, I had the I love the fact that it's a wrap. You said that you mentioned it earlier, the fact it's a wraparound, yes, or a trifold. Um, it's, a, it's such a gorgeous cover, like, and that's the second print because it's the red tint to it, but yeah, uh, like. I didn't. I don't think I until I saw this image that I realized that it's a trifold. Flip it around. It's a full image where you get to truly experience all the differentness because you all you see originally is that. Yeah, exactly. And, that was in the solicit. That's what you see. We didn't. You, you didn't get to know there was a, a folding cover until you you had it in your hands. Yeah, which I mean. Yeah. It's beautiful, and I know like this. Both copies sold. It took a little bit for it to sell at my at my local LCS, but they also buy fifty issues of a new indie comic, which is around here is rare. Like very few yeah. stores buy that many of an indie comic. They'll buy that many of Catwoman or Harley Quinn. They're not going to buy that many of 
hey, Aftershock puts out We Live. Yeah, I'll buy 50 of that. But they had a lot of them, but it took, but in two weeks, there weren't any on the shelf. So wow. that's that's impressive that, because indie comics take, they have a slow build, unless there's a ton of buzz. And I don't recall, a, there was interest in your book, but I don't recall like a huge marketing campaign that we oh. live, but Aftershock is not known for that. They, the boom is bigger and they can do the big, big, uh, big thing. Image can do it. But the fact that it's sold out, the fact that you went to a second and then a third printing, and I, yeah, did you, do you know if five is going to have a, a? I feel like because the 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 dropping what you dropped in five makes me go, and five could have a second printing just because no one knew it was coming. Because usually what happens is by issue three the yeah. numbers drop off. Yes, and yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know, I don't think so. I mean, because we 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 have the. And trade paperback in coming in May, so it's oh yeah, okay. Connor. I think we're going to jump straight to the to the trade. Okay, uh, that's yeah, but... and, and I mean part of all this, it it has to be said, it's it's thanks to AfterShock for trusting in, in us because mm -hmm. we're doing something different. I mean, we knew it when we presented to them, and. And they knew it. There was going to be a risk involved in this because it's not the ordinary story, and there's it's no. It's not gender. typical for them either. They no, they weren't as. They didn't lean into sci-fi, and that's what the book presents as hmm. when you first see it, as much. But I mean, you had the horror elements in there, and I'm sure in your pitch you had a little bit of everything. But like when I think of aftershock, I think of horror now now they're not but when I, every third book i pull up is maniac in new york or it's like a guy with a knife and a blade you have two little kids standing in an overgrown forest of a spaceship it's not the it's not quite as screaming horror and blood and guts though that's in there uh -huh. yeah and at the same time it the cover makes you think that this could be a child a mm. children so it was it was risk involved in every corner because uh, we, it wasn't clear what this was. Oh, wait a yeah. minute. Did you sneak a freaking saw blade above their head? Is that what's floating yeah. above their head? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw that. I was like, oh, God, it's not as pretty as you think it is. <laughs> <laughs> Which I guess in the full, you see what that's a part of. But, man, <laughs> and that, that changes a little bit of, sorry, uh, realization. Wait, no, that's not as happy. It's two kids standing under a saw blade. <laughs> Yes, the dangers standing over them. Yeah, um, but w right now we're in a different situation when everybody knows it's this is, uh, about uh, being unexpected, uh, expecting. Yeah. So hopefully, um, I mean, you still can't say what this comic is yeah. <laughs> because Would it's you going. Also, you had no, some sorry. panels in issue five that I want and I hope will be further explained because you did flashback images of here's what they're the city now. And you go, wait, the city has what coming at them right now? The giant tsunami wave of <laughs> monsters. And you're just like, maybe I missed that in the story, but the, there's that one panel and you're like, and there's like two or three panels like that where you're like now, okay, this, the story where it can go. I'm like, there's so much that you gave in issue five alluding to, when issue six comes out, there's going to be some stuff to be explained, and I like that. Yeah, because that's part of what we live is, and when we when I say it's still going to be a survival story, now even if you have Palladians, mm. uh, this is this is Empire Strikes Back. I mean, nature yeah. is going; it's tougher, way mm -hmm. tougher than it was in the first five issues. So. Uh, it's not going to be easy, even if you have a Palladian on your side. Um, and these are still kids. So, I mean, it's, uh, even though they're made adults, <laughs> they're still yeah. kids in mind and spirit, I assume. So, <laughs> it's, it's going to be a complex. Uh, I mean, Roy and I was, uh, have been speaking about, uh, about that a lot about the complexity of the psychology of the Palladians. Mm. Uh, uh, they're not kids and they're not quite adults. Yeah. But their devel development also it's it's um powerful i mean they're not stupid and they're not kids yeah because part of their uh, evolution it's it's in their minds mm. 
It's not okay. just no. It's not like Shazam, for example. Okay. So mm. so he's not okay. That makes that helps us think through. I'm I'm curious, and of course, I mean, you have it all, but you don't want to reveal because you're like, okay, this is what issue six, seven, eight, nine are all going to be about, and then ten is going to be where I allude to what happens in eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So uh, there's going but, to be a jump in time, and we'll have to uh, explain a little bit in the between, mm -hmm. but. Uh, I think readers will uh, catch up quite quickly to yeah. what's the new situation and what happened before that and in the in between. And for example, you you really want to know what happened to Humbo and Alice, mm. for example. Yeah. And that's something that I mean, Humbo is going to take the um, the always together. You know, and mm. auto yeah to another level for sure <laughs> oh, shoot. So, now 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 you're gonna frustrate me because i have to wait like three months for this book to come out um <laughs> but, uh th thank you so much for sitting down and talking we live with me got uh those of you that if they, if you watch the video if you read the article um just check out the book guys it's it's a great read track it down or wait till may and grab the trade when it comes out um it is a really fun, if you like science fiction, it's great. If you like horror, it's great. If you like a good relationship story, it's great. If you like action, it's all in there. Like, and you've created these characters and they're just fun. I mean, I, I'm waiting for the little toys to come out or the little Humboldt dolls or Haroto dolls. Like, I, I want an Alice and Humboldt little action set. Um, yeah, me too. I, I really want those. I think I, I want those more than the, I want the comics. Yeah. <laughs> so... I think I think you you've created a great thing, and I, I love the I love the soundtrack. I love like there's a, pretty much I liked everything about the book, um, and all five issues, not just issue one. Like I liked, it's a great story to read as a whole, and that, that's to me is the greatest accomplishment that you create five issues that I could sit down and I can read the entire thing in one sitting, or I could read it slowly and listen to each soundtrack like you had you intended, which is what I'm gonna have to do now because I didn't know. That's what I was supposed to do. Sit and stare at it, page one and find all the details and everything. Uh, my One of the guys I, that I write with and interview with, he reads his comic books slow. And so him and I will have completely different experiences right. yes. reading the book. Yes, absolutely. And, I, yeah. and, I need, and I, I'm going to have to learn how to read slow because you intended we live to be not necessarily read slow, but just experienced in a way to where you experience everything. And I'm excited about that. Yeah. Uh, well, I, that you mentioned that. It's like uh, you know, there's two ways of, mm, in my mind, to use music in a in a movie in a film. Mm -hmm. One is you enhance the the moment with uh, music background, and the other one is the music becomes the scene, and the visuals become the backdrop of what's happening. For example, if you if you have *Pulp Fiction*, for example, when yeah. every time Tarantino uses the music. Yeah, it takes over the scene. It's it's the music, and then there's visuals to that music. So that and that's what we intended with "We Live in the Music." Yeah, the music to take over 